Hello and welcome to Beyond Reproach. Hiya. This is Tux Lurzel. Stephanie Domingo. We be drinking. Yes. We got a, a fancy uh, gin and tonic. Mm-hmm. We probably be swearing, most likely. I'll be swearing. <laughs> Today, this is the mini-sode. This is the show where we will be reading listener mail on specific topics related to American history, politics, culture, or global pandemics. Yes. Today, we will be discussing the continuation of our last mini-sode on the coronavirus. Coronavirus. I can't do, I can't do it. Coronavirus! Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I've been practicing my, yes. my cardi, <laughs> my spare time, all the time that I have now. <laughs> <laughs> I like the cut of your jib, <laughs> the cut of your cardi jib. Thank you. We asked everybody to write in or send us voicemails regarding sort of their experiences surrounding the coronavirus yeah, and the their, COVID-19 crisis. Their lockdown experiences. Yeah, what they're grateful for, yeah. et cetera, et yes. cetera. <laughs> and we got some really, we have a lot of responses. A lot of responses. Surprisingly. Yeah. I thought everybody would be too bummed out and not want to write to us, but we got we got some good ones. Yeah. And we also have a lot of international callers. Yeah, we're worldly, y'all. Yes. <laughs> Don't be too jealous. We're so cultured. <laughs> Don't be jealous of my boogie. Of what? Uh, it's a, of your boogie? Yeah, it's a RuPaul thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a RuPaul song. I'm like, what boogie? I... <laughs> Shall we go ahead? Yes. I have an email from a listener and fellow podcaster, Brandon Gregory, from the Peculiar Picture Show podcast. He wrote, Hey, Steph and Tux, writing in to give my story on what's going on during this pandemic. I live in the suburbs surrounding Kansas City, and while our outbreak hasn't been as bad as many other states, most of the documented cases of COVID-19 in Kansas have been right around where I live. So this is a serious threat, even in the less densely populated suburbs of Kansas. All things considered, my family has been extremely fortunate through this whole ordeal. Both my wife and I work office jobs and are able to work from home, and our employers are doing well. I make websites, and my wife works in human resources. Mm. Our teenage son has adjusted well and keeps up with his friends online while also completing some school assignments. We live in a house that allows us all to have our own space and has easy access to biking trails. Oh, wow. Lucky. Lucky! I'm like, space? (laughs) Someone someone has space? (laughs) I live in a a studio, i.e. a box (laughs) in Brooklyn. Wow. Okay, amazing. Um, He writes, with all that said, I'm still scared and stressed out. I'm immunocompromised. My white blood cell count is about one-third of that of a normal person. Oof. Yeah. Doctors have been unable to find out why, but it seems to be a chronic condition. Wow. My wife just lost her father, who died of pneumonia in a hospital in what may have been an untested case of COVID-19. Oof, that's... Yeah. So he says, uh, he goes on to say, I'm having to work to maintain my mental health. I go for walks almost every day. I work out using weights in a punching bag. I'm still producing episodes of my podcast with my co-host Maria, and I'm recording remotely with bands to put out a few songs during lockdown. Cool. Yeah. Super ambitious. Okay. He goes on to say, I'm putting a lot of effort into planning meals so we can get by with only going out once a week for supplies while still eating healthy. And anytime I'm not doing one of those things, I allow myself to be non-productive and just rest, mostly by watching classic movies and playing Dragon Age Inquisition on my Xbox. I've seen a few posts on Twitter saying that if you don't come out of this lockdown with a new skill and something to show for the time you're lazy and low performing, this is bullshit. (sighs) If I, in my life of relative privilege, am struggling right now, everyone is struggling. In these times, if you're getting by, even if you're just barely scraping by, you're accomplishing something. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, you know, I understand where that meme or whatever it is is it's coming so from. Gross. But like, so like People cope in different and- ways. And some people really are being super productive because that's the only, that's how they're coping. Yeah. But other people are like curled up under a blanket with the lights off. Yeah. And that's okay, too. Either is fine. Yeah. It's okay to not be okay. Exactly. Like, people 
cope in different ways. Exactly. It's so shaming and, and mean spirited to yeah. try to put people down just because they're not producing. Like producing for what? For who? Like for who? Exactly. Yeah. This Ugh. is not the time to be like making yourself available to be taken advantage of. Exactly. It's so ingrained in our society, though. You know? Yeah, that your self worth is part of your so productiveness. Tied to what you produce if you can't produce you're nothing and it's that that's not true but what are you producing for for someone else to make money off of you Mm -hmm. yeah thanks brandon for that message that was really really interesting and really thoughtful uh we have a another message from maria who is brandon's co-host on the peculiar picture show yeah (laughs) bit of a tongue twister (laughs) i love it which we may be making a guest appearance on at some point in the near-ish future yes rubs hands together (laughs) maria says hi stephanie and tux i live in denver colorado and i think our area took action against the virus earlier than others or perhaps it just seems that way i haven't been in my office since march 17th and i'm lucky enough to be able to work from home during this time my boyfriend though was told not to come back to work on march 20th so he's been out of the job but we're lucky enough to be okay for a while as we wait for this to start clearing up Once it does, though, I am hoping that he can find something quickly. I, too, have a little bit of survivor's guilt like Stephanie does, although my experience is not as traumatizing. But I feel really guilty that we can survive fine without my boyfriend's income, yet others are struggling. I feel guilty about my friends and coworkers who have children, although maybe it's more that I feel relieved that I don't have those kinds of obligations. Hashtag same. <laughs> I know, seriously. Oh. I can't I can't even imagine. Yeah. Especially the people that are having to like try and homeschool for the first time. Yeah, that that's a big one. And the people who are doing that on top of being recently unemployed or have full-time jobs and are still working yeah and having to homeschool too at the same time like totally different situations but both terrible i mean my sister has said half jokingly that the summer has come early for her kids yeah because she's not being paid to be a teacher no i mean that's kind of my yeah my sister's in the same boat yeah she's doing what she can but she's not killing herself exactly she says people in colorado seem to be taking things seriously but we still have had some protests I've been a little more focused on Florida, though, because that's where I grew up and most of my family is there, including my mother, father, and brother, who all live together, all who have compromised immune systems. Yikes. So it's like, I can't even imagine being... I'd be so scared. And it's scary enough if you are immunocompromised and you live in somewhere like New York that's taking it very seriously. Yeah. But then to be in a state where, like, no one seems to be taking seriously, you're essentially housebound. Yeah. Like, you can't even open the door and who knows for how long because it's just going to keep spreading yeah during the first part of this crisis when denver was in lockdown and florida almost was my 78 year old father who has copd was going to the store three times a day because that's all he really did before then and he claims to not want to freeze food he needs things fresh at the same time He wasn't washing his hands or taking precautions, and when my mother and brother would mention this to him, he would have a temper tantrum. Oh, no. I mean, it's hard to adjust. I understand. Yeah. But you also have to be like, you're putting yourself at risk, and you're already at a higher risk. Yeah, you're putting yourself and your whole family at risk. Exactly, yeah. So I was on edge all the time during this first part of this, imagining my father getting the entire household sick and how I would handle that being so far away from them. But my father has since stopped going to the grocery store every day, and I'm feeling more than fine staying at home and working from home. And I'm dreading going back to the office, which is weird for me because I am highly extroverted and love being out doing things. So perhaps I am just able to focus more on the positive things about staying home. Those include rolling out of bed five minutes before having to join a conference call. Hashtag, I am doing the exact (laughs) same thing. (laughs) I don't have to deal with that. My job. Oh, it's Thank so annoying. Lord. It's so annoying. I yeah. Hate. Like, why, why you got to see me? Huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> with my bald eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, running on my lunch break or in between meetings. I am an avid runner. Spending time with my very smart but old lady dog. Figuring out how to make the most of food and the ingredients I have on hand. I love cooking. And focusing on getting housework done. As we bought a fixer upper last year and there's plenty to do. Oh, yeah. I'm jealous. I love projects. <laughs> I wish that I had projects to do because there's really not much to do in our apartment. I've been yeah. trying to garden, but you've already done everything yeah. and I can't even really get to the store to, Oh, cause they're closed. So yeah. I'm like, I moved a bench in my garden <laughs> the other day just cause I like needed to have something to do. There's bricks under it. So it doesn't sink into the ground. So I oh, had to okay. dig up all the bricks. Oh, I'm okay. like, this is my project for oh, today. Anyways, stuff. <laughs> 
Uh, she says, I know there's more than three things to be grateful for, but sometimes it's okay to break the rules, right? Take care, and I'm glad you guys are safe. Maria Milazzo from the Peculiar Picture Show. Thanks, Maria. That yeah. was awesome. I hope your Florida family remains safe, but it sounds like they're getting used to taking precautions yeah. now. It sounds like they're doing the things, but it's just, it's unfortunate that you have to worry about people, other people just because living people their lives, yeah. putting you at risk. I can't believe all these people in the protests. It's very disgusting. <sighs> We're not going to get into that. Yeah. Okay. So we have a message from Hamish at the Third Wheel podcast. I did a little spot on their podcast earlier this year, I think. Anyways, I was a guest on their podcast very briefly. And then um, we just recorded yesterday. I was like an official guest. So that will be coming out soon. Tune into Instagram for information on that. So this is Hamish. Hey, Beyond Reproach listeners. I'm Hamish. I'm a co-host from the Third Wheel FM over in the UK. Coronavirus has affected me by obviously keeping me in the house for quite a long time. Being up in the same place with your family would, is quite s- stressful, when, especially when you prefer to be either out or by yourself a lot of the time. So that is one effect that's had on my life. However, it has enabled me to, since I save time on commuting, I do get to start do a bit of cooking. So one of my go-to things currently is messing with tofu recipes. And by tofu, I mean like vegan soy tofu. And I definitely would recommend that. Three things I am grateful for are Banana Tree and Nando's in the UK, which are two food chains in the UK, which I highly recommend you visit if you ever get the chance to visit whenever all of this madness is over. The second is going to be Call of Duty, which I've recently got back into with a few friends. And I used to play this when I was younger, so I'm very grateful for that because it is a hell of a load of fun, especially if you play with the right people. And the third is going to be as cringe as it sounds, my friends, because during this time, Aww. we've been organizing game nights and it's been quite fun to do so. And yeah, also participating. So it's been a hell of a lot of fun. It's brought a hell of a lot of laughter and during these times where we're in social isolation. So I do recommend you join in and uh, have some game nights with your friends. If not, you're more than welcome to join the third video once we host it at 8.30 p.m. BST. And that's British summer time. So yeah anyone's more than welcome to join we made some new friends via it so that's been really really good and it's an open invite to anyone i hope this helps to step and talks out and i hope everyone is staying safe and maintaining social distancing good job beyond reproach keep doing what you're doing thank you see you bye thanks hamish we should join there game night game nights are such a good idea yeah tux and i have been doing like a weekly standing thursday we play quiplash yeah with a few friends and it's it's real real it's a fun. Lot of fun yeah, yeah something to like look forward to all week like yeah. oh, I get to see people and do do something it's so fun i mean it's not the same as like being at a physical party with your friends but no, it's it's, it's something. still something yeah, yeah absolutely we can have a, a link to their game night yeah we should we'll put Fridays. that in the show notes yeah I, I do i keep wanting to join i'm gonna try for this friday Okay, so we have a message from a listener named max who lives in italy hey beyond reproach it's Max from Italy. You asked how coronavirus has affected my life. I'm a full-time musician and I run a small studio as a producer and session guitar player. Most of my income relies on live concerts, weddings, being a sideman in bands, recording other musicians, actually. As most of my peers, I've lost all of my bookings for a foreseeable future, but this didn't hold me back from pursuing my dreams. Of course, uh, an already steep road just became steeper, I guess. But as of today, nobody's career is granted, you know. Uh, I wouldn't linger too much on the negative impact of this crisis because we all have one, of course. This great pause allowed me to see through things more clearly. I'm back learning new stuff, drawing, writing, reading books that were stockpiling on my desk. Somebody said, learn to deal with the valleys and the hills will take care of themselves. I couldn't agree more, especially during this time. That's why I thought it would have been more useful to focus on what to do to bring creative people together and sharing ideas, craft, and their process to be as contagious as this damn virus and to hold creative people from stepping away from their jobs, from their efforts, and even more from their process. I've called on some artists I know, and I've started an Instagram Live series called Maps, in which each one of these artists explain how their brain works and how it's working during this time. It's 
like unbelievable the magic that happens when these people get to share their thoughts. I've been receiving messages from people I don't even know about this or that particular thing said during the Instagram live uh, and how that actually affected their current thought process. It's just amazing. To quote a Bruce Springsteen song, we take care of our own. We really are. It's like everybody's drawing a road on a map, the map of the world we live in, and together we're trying to shape the future or maybe just framing what we're all scared of, just giving it a face, you know? What am I grateful for? Well, uh, I'm grateful for how many people are reaching out to the others, even just on an intellectual level, not, not necessarily a material one. I'm grateful for the people who are actually teaching me how to properly bake a cake on YouTube. <laughs> well, my body maybe is not that happy about that. <laughs> I'm grateful for my hair. I mean, I'm starting to lose them in the perfect moment in history. <laughs> Barbershops are closed, and I totally suck at cutting them. <laughs> Thank you, Beyond Reproach. Take care and stay creative. Amazing. <laughs> we'll link to his Instagram and his like Instagram Live maps. Cool. So nice. Yeah. To hear something positive coming yeah. out of Italy, just like creative people are still doing their thing online. It is great to see all the different things that people are doing. Have you been following that DJ, is it D-Nice, the DJ that does mm. like music DJ nights on, I think it's on Instagram. No. Oh my God. It's really fun. Really? Yeah. We'll, yeah. Send it to me. Yeah. Maybe we'll try and link that in the show notes yeah, too. Yeah. If you have the energy to really be creative right now it's so cool to see what people are doing mm -hmm. so i also have an email from our friend sarath stephanie and i knew in ithaca a yes. million years ago yes <laughs> sarath says hey tux and stephanie i wanted to uh share something quick with you for your podcast lately i've been hearing about some racist behavior towards asians there's the obvious protests of going to chinese restaurants I heard one uh, Asian woman at the grocery store was intimidated and was told to go shop with her own kind. And there have been people walking down their own street and being verbally abused by cars passing by. I'm sure there's more, and I'm sure there's worse. This is just what I've known so far. It's terrible. People are the fucking worst. They can be. Some, Some people. people. Yes, exactly. The worst people are always the loudest. Yes, You know? Totally. Like, why can't you just be shitty quietly? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh she said, uh, thank goodness there haven't been any violent incidents that I know of, but still, what is going on? We're doing blatant racism now. It's mind boggling how dumb people are in 2020. But then again, we have our country's leader calling it a Chinese virus. Yeah. So racist. Oh, he's just trying to, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for pulling yourself back. Yeah. Like, he's just. No. Nope. Nope. I'm not, not, we're going, not going there. there. Uh, Sareth says, I haven't left the house because there's nowhere to go anyway, but I'm starting to wonder if I should be on guard when I do decide to go somewhere. My husband has been doing the grocery runs, so I feel I wouldn't even know how to manage out in the world right now. Is it ugly out there? When the shutdown is over and I go back to wait my waitressing job, how will people treat me? Mm. I can't believe I'm having such doubts and fears as a full-grown adult. She says, I hope this was helpful. Good luck with the new episode. Seraph. Yeah, it is something to be mindful of. It's It sucks that she has to worry about racism, like when she goes back to work. Yeah. But this is America. I mean, there's always been <laughs> shitty people, yeah. and there always will be shitty exactly. people. Exactly, yeah. They're in the minority, but they are loud and awful. Yeah. And it sucks that anyone has to deal with that, but it can't stop you from working, obviously. Yeah. You need to work. And hopefully, you know... You surround yourself with good people. Hopefully yeah. it should be. It will d die down, unfortunately. But yeah, we have literally the worst leadership in the White House right now who's just like fanning the flames of division and racism just because. <laughs> yeah. We also have a message from Tatiana. Yes. Uh, another, actually, another friend of ours from Ithaca from back in the day. Hey, guys. It's Tatiana down here in Tucson, Arizona. Checking in with uh, my experience and interpretations. You know, I'm in a little bit of a unique situation because I have an eight-month-old baby that I primarily was staying home with already. Um, now I've shifted my job to be pretty much 100% stay at home. So, you know... Life for us hasn't changed too dramatically 
selfishly, I'm having a hard time because I wish that we could have help uh, from my mom. She lives about four hours away. And she's, she's in good health, but we're just not taking any chances. So, you know, gone are the trips where she would come for a few weeks and just help out with the day-to-day stuff. It's a lot to juggle. Um, I'm sure any of your listeners who have kids know it's, a, it's just a lot. And now, you yeah. know, the weather is so warm here that we're sort of reverse seasonally um, inside bound by the hot time of year. So that's another kind of, I guess I feel like I'm going a little bit stir crazy um, without having play dates at the park or pools or, or whatnot. But again, I feel like that's really selfish. And, you know, I'm very, very fortunate to have a pretty wonderful life and and situation uh where there's so many coming in and you know i'm able to earn some money and primer and take care of my child so that's my little boohoo moment it's it's crazy here you know because we're still on lockdown until may 18th but golf courses are still open (laughs) Um, our governor arizona Oh. When we initially had stay-at-home orders, the list of essential businesses included hair salons and nail salons until he got too much flack, and, and eventually those shut down as well. But, you know, I'm, I'm kind of watching this whole thing unravel, wondering how much longer we're setting ourselves back, basically. And now I think we're at a nationwide point where... There are just such varying degrees of seriousness being taken, taken serious. Um, And, you know, it's pretty evident to anyone with half a brain that we're preemptively trying to boost the economy, which I understand that that's a crushing issue, but we're about to probably have a spike in hospital intakes and cases because there's just too many idiots out there COVID idiots um, (laughs) and you know people won't take it seriously enough and more people will become infected and sick and so you know there again is another selfish point where it's kind of just depressing to think about and just then I feel sorry for myself and I wonder well how long is this all gonna last but yeah just tempering it. I mean, all the memes out there, you know, about all of the other time points in history where people have been quarantined in their homes without any of the modern luxuries that we have now. I mean, it's definitely good food for thought. It's really scary. I mean, in my county right now, I haven't checked lately, um, but, you know, we're well over a thousand cases and we do have a lot of older people here. And I mean, there's retirement homes where it's just spreading like wildfire. So my experience is um, shock and and awe and um, doing what I can. I'm pretty able to stay occupied with my child and that helps me stay positive. And, you know, I just hope that the positivity can remain intact and I can do my part to flatten the curve. So thanks for your wonderful podcast. Definitely is a bright spot in my day these days and every day. Um, so keep it up and stay safe. Hopefully moving forward, it'll be second nature to look out for our neighbors, look out for our small businesses. I I, I know it's going to be years of recovering from this, but, um, keep the faith alive. Thank you, Tatiana. Yeah, Um, that was great. It's crazy to me how different, different states are handling it. Georgia is fully open. By the time this goes out upstate new york will be starting to open back up and i just hope people from the city don't just flood up there Mm -hmm. because all over the country people who are living in bigger cities urban areas have been trying to flee to smaller towns and just like hang out there and it's like you don't know if you're infected or not you can't just be going to these small rural communities just because you want you know to see nature yeah (laughs) you're putting everyone at risk yeah i too am hopeful that the right things happen in november yeah i have to believe that we are in such uncertain times anything can happen but i just hope people are paying attention yeah i think there's enough problems that people can't ignore it 
I'm, it's all speculation. We'll we'll see what happens. We just need the thirty percent who didn't vote. Yeah, to come absolutely. back in. If we can get ten percent, that's all we need. Y'all better vote. Ten percent. If any of our listeners are not registered to vote, do it. Go register to vote right now. You can do it online. It takes two minutes. All of our listeners are registered to vote. Fingers crossed. You better be. We're Seriously. coming for you. Seriously, I'm just like <laughs> what? Yeah. We have. Um, I've been putting the squeeze to all of my international friends. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we have so many. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kind of. I mean, also, it is an, a good perspective yeah. to have. And, and they do listen on occasion. So it's like, hey, I definitely phoned in favors, but I'm so upset about not being able to go to Italy for my birthday in August. I have to accept that I can't go there yeah. just because things are too hot here. So no, leaving I- like the... <laughs> the most populated area for COVID and going to the second most populated doesn't really yeah, make a, a lot of idea. sense. <laughs> um, the next person is my, my cousin, Alex. He lives in, in Frankfurt and he has a message because shocking people are doing things differently, <laughs> perhaps better in other places. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Tux. Greetings from Germany. I really like your podcast and I listen to it whenever I can. My name is Alex and I live near Frankfurt so I'm pretty central in Europe. As you might have heard, we started here with a soft lockdown mid-March and just now slowly going back to the new normal. For example, convenience stores and hairdressers are opening up again. Sure, with precautions like masks and limited customers per store and a lot of hand sanitizing fluids. From a customer's point of view, these masks are absolutely mandatory to enter any kind of public facilities over here for the time being. Sure, it's a bit annoying because personal freedom has been temporarily reduced, but I believe it's a fair price to pay in keeping the vulnerable safe. Having said that, we have a lot of NGOs and and economy-orientated news groups that would like sooner or later opening up all commercial businesses to prevent a long-term damage to our export-orientated industry. Let's see where all of this is going to end. Unfortunately, this worldwide pandemic further disclosed the difficulty of providing high-level medical care for everyone just in time. Let's do hope that this is a lesson learned session for every country involved. My three things that I actually learned to appreciate more through the corona situation? Well, first I would say informed media that focuses on the topic and the facts based on actual research. What's that? Personally, that helped me a lot (laughs) not to fall for the fear tactic (laughs) hype that you see so often in online social media today. Secondary, it's yeah, family, um, spending time with them. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, they have now more of it and you can use it to reconnect. And the third would be to focus also on myself and to reflect what's really mandatory and important to me. When you're spending a lot of time with yourself, you start thinking. Absolutely. I wish you both all the best for today's episode, and please stay healthy. When I'm going to be over in the U.S., I will definitely pass by and say hi in person. Yay. Take care. Bye-bye. Alex is my favorite cousin. I mean, they're all... I, I have four German cousins. We're the closest in age. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He comes through often, but I think it's going to be a while before there is international travel back through New York. I know. It's going to be interesting to see yeah. how all that plays out. I hope it's soon, but I... I don't know. <laughs> Russell has like a whole like second family essentially know, in right? in London and he's like desperate to go see them. Oh, like it's not. I don't know. This summer is Yeah. I don't think we're going to be able to go anywhere until like maybe September before the next wave of this comes. I know. It's in crazy. October, November. Yeah, we also have a message from my friend Adam in Australia on the Gold Coast. Hi, Stephen Tux. Greetings from Australia. The coronavirus situation uh, here seems to be going a lot better than the rest of the world. Where we can lay the blame for that, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> I am. The state governments have been very uh, active in uh, instituting restrictions over the last couple of months. Generally, social distancing and border lockdowns and all those sort of things have worked fairly well. In addition, uh, we seem to have one of the highest uh, rates of testing in the world. And we're a very big country with a very low population density, which helps. My personal experience, I was uh, working out of my 
state when the lockdowns first begin began to take effect. I was working in a very regional part of Australia. I was about to go into some very remote communities, which it turns out I would not have been able to go into because uh, they're uh, some of the most vulnerable to uh, pandemics. I returned home in March and I've only left the state once since, which I had to apply get a special permission to re-enter the state once I had left. Amazing. Um, This is how it's done. What else? Uh, We have had less than 10,000 confirmed cases in the country, less than 100 deaths. Most of those 